Uh, let's pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for giving us this moment to be in your presence, to fellowship together, and to share your word, and just to continue to talk about prevailing prayer. And um, Lord, just to enjoy the fellowship of your love. And so Lord, as we continue together, we pray that you give us revelation and understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. So let's continue. We um, Last Wednesday we were, uh, we were talking about uh, the throne, you coming to the throne when we are in prayer. And uh, we looked at a number of things. And um, just to recap, we say that, uh, uh, that we should approach the throne um, remembering that it is the throne of grace. And so, uh, because it's the throne of grace, according to, uh, let's just revi uh, review that, according to Hebrews chapter number 4, verse number 16. Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 16. You say, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we all should always remember that the throne that you are coming into is the throne of prayer, but is also the throne of grace. Um, but one more thing that we should also know, that even though it is the throne of grace, uh, let's read this uh, so that I can explain. Uh, First Peter chapter 5, verse number 10. It is also the throne of justice and judgment first peter chapter 5 verse number 10 um first peter chapter number 5 verse number 10 if i'm right uh, uh verse number 10 yes but the god of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by christ jesus after that he has suffered a while, make you perfect and um, establish, and, um, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Um, that's First Peter, First Peter chapter number five, uh, verse number ten. I think there's another scripture that I wanted to read for you, but First Peter chapter number five, verse number ten, still tells us it's a throne. Of grace but I'll get that scripture and I'll let you know uh, that even though it is a throne of grace we should also understand that it is I think it's a book of uh, Romans I'll get it and give it to you that it's also the throne of justice and also the throne of judgment or the throne of justice and also the throne of righteousness so even as we come to the throne of grace we should not um, you know take the grace um, carelessly we should know that the grace of God cannot overlook his own uh, justice uh, the Bible says justice and righteousness are the found that's the scripture I was looking for justice and righteousness are the foundations of his throne or justice and judgment are the foundations of his throne so while we understand that the throne of God is a throne of grace, we should never uh, overlook the fact that justice uh, is also a foundation of that throne and judgment is also a foundation of that throne. So therefore, uh, we cannot therefore, you know, willingly do wrong, go against the promises and go against the word of God and then say, oh, I will go to the, the, uh, the throne of grace because uh, I will go to prayer because the throne of prayer is a throne of grace. No, we should be careful to understand that God is, is confined within um, his word. It's, it's principle upon principle. It is precept upon precept. So if the throne, of, the throne of prayer or the throne of God is a throne of grace, then also be careful to understand that there is also justice to be observed there, righteousness to be observed there, and judgment to be observed there. Okay, so the other thing uh, that we talked about is that 
it is a throne uh, uh, that we should approach the throne with boldness. Again, the same scripture of Hebrews chapter number 4 verse uh, verse 16, he say, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. And uh, we looked at that a little bit in detail. We say, why should we come boldly? Number one, we understood that Christ himself is an intercessor. So you are coming to the throne where Christ, whom we pray in his name, is an intercessor already praying there. So you are coming to the throne of an intercessor. We also saw that... Uh, he is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. So Christ, who is an intercessor, is also touched with our infirmities, is in on that throne. Again, we also saw that he's compassionate concerning us and is on that throne. So as you come to that throne, come boldly. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Number three, approach the throne with openness and sincerity. When you're coming to the throne of grace, be open, be very sincere. Remember that God already knows the things that you're coming to pray for. But he has put it that we must pray for them, for him to answer. So God knows all your details as you come uh, to him. He thus desires us to share our needs openly and fully, hiding nothing. So do not hide anything. Remember even the purpose for which you are praying, God already knows it. But he, he, he just loves your sincerity. So when you're coming there, do not, do not hide anything because we cannot hide anything from him. And our sincerity opens the door for him to answer our prayers. And if we hide anything, we lie before him and we cannot lie before him because all things are open before him. All things the Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13, all things are open and naked before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. So we cannot hide anything uh, from him. So um, come with the, to the throne with openness and sincerity. Isaiah 37 verse 14. Let's look at that together. Isaiah 37 uh, verse 14. Verse 14 says, And Hezekiah received the letter from the, the hand of the messengers, and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord, and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord, and he continued to pray. So what did he do? He just took the letter and spread it before the Lord. In other words, there was nothing naked, there was nothing hidden. It was all naked in the eyes of God. That is exactly how we need to come to, in prayer. Um, it's like you've written the letter and, the, and you, you're showing it to everyone to read it. So let God read the letters of our hearts concerning our prayer without hiding anything. The more we fully, uh, the more uh, fully you share the situation with the Lord, the more easily you will be able to prevail in prayer. Isaiah 1, 18. Let's look at that. Isaiah 1, 18. And I encourage you to go and read these um, uh, scriptures again by yourself, even as you uh, stay in prayer. The scripture says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. So this is God himself is saying, come, let's reason. In other words, you, you, you say the truth about yourself and let God say the truth about himself. That, the truth about God is the word, his word. So that reminds me again, the throne is a throne of grace, but the foundation to that throne is justice and righteousness. Righteousness means right doing. So on that throne, it's the, it's the, what, that throne can only do the right thing. The right thing is the thing that is in line with these principles and these precepts. So come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sin be as scarlet, they shall be as, as white as snow. Though they are red, uh, be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. But the big, the big point here is come and let's reason together. Uh, verse 19 says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So if you if you come there 
um, willing to openly reason or explain or talk to God openly, uh, you will be able to eat the fruit of the land. Um, okay, so let's look at uh, Isaiah 43, 25. Isaiah 43, 25. In verse number 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember thy sin. Now look at verse number 26 closely. And I wish I had the, uh, the amplified version to read for you. Verse number 26. I'm reading from the King James. It says, Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Put me in remembrance, let us plead together. Or let us bring our arguments together. So that is how much God wants us to be open. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. So talk, God says, talk to me. Tell me your reason. Explain to me um, what you have. Let me hear it that I may respond back to you. So come before the throne with openness. Number four, approach the throne with faith. Come to the throne with faith. Let's look at Hebrews chapter number 11. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 11. Verse number 6. Come to the throne with faith. Not by faith, with faith. Come there with faith, knowing that what you are going to ask for there, you are going to get. Verse number 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So, as you are coming there with faith, you are, you, are, you are making him happy because he knows that you know that you know that when you ask him, you will get what you are asking him for. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, uh, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You come with faith and um, um, you, believe, you believe that he is, of course, in that throne and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. In other words, that he's going to reward or he's going to give you that which you're asking him. And especially because prevailing prayer is about his kingdom. So, and his, way, his desire is that his kingdom be established. So the assurance that whatsoever we are going to ask him is prolonging, is establishing his kingdom and expanding his kingdom. And so, with faith, um, uh, we, we, uh, we come uh, in his throne to pray. So, I just want to say this. Come with faith. Remember, a throne is a place where royal answers are given. So as you are coming with faith, know that the throne is a place where royal answers are given. So you are going to receive a royal answer from that throne. It is where the king makes decisions. So you are coming to a place where the king is going to make a decision. When that decision is made, it is established. No one can change it. Come as a prince and a member of the royal family. So you are coming with faith as a prince and a member of the royal family. So what does that tell you? You are not coming in timidity. You are not coming in fear. You are not coming in doubt. You are not thinking maybe or maybe not I will get it. You are a member of the royal family. So come with faith then you're going to get it. Amen. Number five, approach the throne with love and joy. Approach eagerly and lovingly, for God is your Father. Come with love because God himself 
um, loves you. So approach the throne with love and joy. Very, very important. With love and, and joy. Because, you know, you, you, you are coming to a throne where you have been promised. And you have the promise. And so, it is just another time to go and receive what belongs to you for that time. So you are so joyous because you know you are going to get what you need. You know that you are loved. You know that you you are, you know you are is is a, is a, is com compassionate towards you. Is touched with the feelings of your infirmity. So come with joy. Come with with exuberance and with love, because he is a God himself, a God of love, and you too are loved, even as you are coming to the throne. Remember Second Peter chapter number. Uh, chapter number one, verse number four. That it, let, let me read it. Second Peter chapter number one, verse four. Um, let me read from verse three. According to his divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertaineth unto life and godliness all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. So as we are coming to the throne, we are coming with the understanding he has given us so many promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So that by these promises, we are going to be partakers of the divine nature. By those promises, as you come to the throne, you are going to be a partaker of his divine nature. Those divinely um, orchestrated uh, pro, um, you know, blessings that you need or that you are asking for. So let's talk about the reality of the throne for some time. The reality of the throne. Is the throne real? What is, what is it about this throne that you're coming into? Now, Revelation 3.21, Revelation 3.21, um, says like this, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and I am set down with my father in his throne. So, so, him that overcometh will be granted the opportunity to sit uh, with Jesus Christ on the throne, um, even, um, even as him also I overcame, and uh, he sat with the father on the throne. So, this is, this is the picture of how Finally, um, after, the, after the Lord has conquered Satan, together with him, we will be seated physically on the throne for etern uh, eternally. But the same, same way that that description is made there is the same way that we should picture our sitting on the throne or being with the Lord on the throne spiritually today. The same way that him that overcomes will be seated with him on the throne is the same way that we should picture ourselves on the throne with the Lord today and much more when we come uh, in prayer. Picture yourself when you come into prevailing prayer. Picture yourself being with the Lord, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father on the throne. That way, in the same manner as it is described in in. Um, Revelation uh, 3.21 here. So, Christ wants us to enjoy throne life even today on earth through his death, resurrection, and exaltation. His intention for us now is to enjoy the throne life. Have the attitude of a throne life 
that now he has given to us through his death. Galatians 2.20 Galatians 2.20 Uh, Galatians 2.20, it says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Um, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Crucified with Christ. Now, if you are crucified with Christ, you also died with Christ, you are buried with Christ, and you raised with Christ, and you are seated with Christ. Look at, look at uh, Romans 6.6. 6. Romans 6.6. 6. Knowing that Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So the old man is crucified with him. So it is no longer the old man that lives, but the new man that lives that was resurrected with him. And therefore is enjoying the throne life taken from that old nature and now um, enjoying the, the, the throne life where Christ himself is. Ephesians 2.6. I want us to look at all these scriptures just to talk about this throne a little bit. Ephesians 2.6. Um, it says... And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Crucified with him, um, buried with him, raised up with him, seated up with him in the heavenly places in Christ, inside Christ. Ephesians 1.3 We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ in heavenly places. That is the throne life. Ephesians 1.22 It says, And hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him uh, that filleth all things. So he is the head of the church, and the church is his body, and he is seated on the throne, and so he is the head, so the body is also enjoying that throne life. Glory to God. Um, John 15, 5. I know you know it, but let's read all these scriptures. John 15, 5. John 15, 5. Henceforth, I call you not... Uh, John 15, 5, okay. Henceforth I call you not servants. Sorry, John 15, 5, yes. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For, um, for without me you can do nothing. I am the vine, you are the branches. If the vine is on the throne, the, the branches are also on the throne. Enjoy the throne life. With Christ. Now look at John 17, 11 and 14. John 17, 11 and 14. 11 says, And now I am no I am I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me. That they may be one as we are. Now the part I want you to understand. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world. Now hold it there. Go to verse 14. I'm, I'm, I'm no longer in the world. But these are in the world. Now verse 14. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because 
they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So, he says in verse, uh, in verse, verse 11, they are in the world. And verse 14, he says, they are not of the world. Very, very important for us to understand that even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. In spirit, we, um, we have been lifted above the worldly uh, nature and the earthly nature, and that is very temporal. So we, so we are in the world, but not of the world. So in, spiritually, we are seated with Christ in the on the throne. All things are under our feet because we are in Christ as we have seen. And Romans 16, 20 uh, says, God of peace will crush Satan under our feet. So therefore, as we enjoy the, the throne life and in prevailing prayer, we should therefore understand that all things are under our feet. Satan will be crushed under our feet. So therefore, by, by understanding the nature of the throne, we are coming into prevailing prayer and to the throne with the understanding of having overcome the enemy being under our feet. Yet God just requires us to pray so that we can keep Satan where he belongs and we can get mighty answers. That understanding needs to be with us all the time as we come to the throne of grace in prevailing prayer. The conquest, listen to this, and you can write this down. The conquest must be accomplished through prevailing intercession. Then we will realize the power to crush Satan. So the conquest must be accomplished through prevailing prayer, uh, prevailing intercession. Then we will realize the power to, cr uh, to crush Satan. We are seated with Christ on his throne, triumphant, in him and through him. Let's go back to Ephesians 1 and read through. Um, Ephesians 1. Let's read this through. I do know that we we know this, but let's read through from verse 17. Please listen and just get this. We have always read this, but just get it. Uh, Paul talking about how he's praying for the Ephesians, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, why he has called us, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints is. Part of this, this kind of throne life is in this inheritance. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power, Towards, towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head of all things, even to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all. And if you go continue in chapter 2, you read through verse 6 again. And that raised us up together and made us to be seated and to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is so important for us um, to master, to know um, that we are seated with him in heavenly places. So therefore, Christ, um, we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. And he has delegated to us the privilege of praying in his name. Uh, resisting Satan and crushing Satan under our feet. As Satan is already under our feet. So therefore, because you know, he's already under our feet. But therefore, the privilege of praying in his name gives us the ability to keep Satan where he belongs, under our feet. Crushing him under our feet and keeping him under our feet at all times 
and being partakers of God's blessings and 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 the and the answers to prayer we are to re, uh, to reign or to prevail by prayer just as Christ reigns or prevails in prayer so i'm being told my time is up but let me introduce this so we will we'll, we'll continue from there next uh, next time the normalcy of the throne of uh, the throne the throne life the normalcy of the throne life so we'll continue from there that jesus wants believers to have it normal in exercising their throne authority in prevailing prayer keep that in mind jesus wants believers to have it a normal life a normal part of our lives in exercising our throne authority in preva prevailing prayer glory to god hallelujah hallelujah well thank you very much we bless god for this we'll continue to understand this so as we are concluding today the important thing for us here today is to understand the throne life. And that throne life gives us the, the confidence and the boldness in prayer as we come to the throne as members of the royal family, but also as we, as we exercise authority to Satan because we understand he is already under our feet. Therefore, we can therefore keep Satan where he belongs, away from our spheres, but also use the name of Jesus to pray to the Father as members of the royal family to receive the blessings that we need. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and favor you in all things, even as you use your, um, your, your authority as a member of the royal family, to keep Satan where he belongs, and as a member of the royal family, to receive the blessings from our Father through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's pray. If you have any need, just agree with me as we pray that the Lord will answer you. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. We are so grateful that you have given us the privilege to enter at any time and access at the throne to come and ask in your name jesus to ask the father in your name anything that we desire according to your will so therefore i agree with the brethren that are in need various needs that they have that they can mention by themselves i agree with them my father and i ask that you give to them for the glory of your name and for the fulfillment of the scriptures that talks about our position in the on the throne thank you we will continue to enjoy our position with the lord jesus christ on this throne even as we are here on earth and we do not belong to the earth thank you father for answering our prayer in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen